I'm Judy Shaw for NYSE Floor Talk. Joining me today, I have a very special guest, Robert Eskridge. He is the Director of Government Affairs at Intercontinental Exchange. Rob, it's so great to have you. Thanks for joining me on Floor Talk. Thank you so much for having me, Judy. I'm really excited to be here. So, Rob, it's actually great to have you here on the floor for Floor Talk because you're not actually based here. So tell me about your role and tell me about your responsibilities. Certainly. So as you mentioned, my job is the Director of Government Affairs at the Intercontinental Exchange. And our team is based in Washington, D.C. I'm about one of about 16 members that's based in our D.C. office. Uh, essentially, my job is to serve as the advocate or mediator, so to speak, in between our exchanges, our trade lines of business here at the Intercontinental Exchange, uh, and those elected federal officials in Washington, D.C. We're talking about all three branches of government we have touch points with. So for me, when I'm thinking about my job and how to effectively work on behalf of ICE and our businesses and our listed companies here, uh, I'm thinking about three things. I'm thinking about relationships, I'm thinking about legislation, and I'm thinking about messaging. So those three things are super high level and super important for me to be effective and effective advocate for our company here at ICE. So Rob, you've had a very interesting career. Tell me about it. Certainly. So I started my career off as a interning prosecutor uh, for the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia, uh, and I was based in the Netherlands. I was working on the Milosevic case. Uh, so I decided to move back to the States after about a year working there. I was in private practice uh, and I really realized that I wanted to have touch points in government and I wanted to work for government. Uh, so a friend of mine who was running for Attorney General for the state of Ohio gave me an opportunity where I was able to serve uh, within the solicitor's office and serve as an assistant solicitor, an assistant attorney general for the state of Ohio. I served for four Ohio attorneys generals uh, under my tenure there. Uh, and before I trans tr transitioned my career into the D.C. federal side, moved to D.C. Uh, for about 10 years, I worked on the House Ethics Committee as a nonpartisan counsel, essentially working on behalf and advocating for members and their staffers, working with them so they can essentially follow the rules before they actually break the rules, so helping them understand the rules of the House and the Senate, working with members, developing relationships, et cetera. Uh, one relationship uh, developed really, really specially for me, and that was one with Congressman Al Green, uh, who's my former boss. I'm his former chief of staff, where I served with him for about two years uh, in the House of Representatives, worked on very interesting cadre of issues. He's a senior member of the Financial Services Committee, uh, so that really allowed me to get my hands deep into the issues that we work here at ICE. So. Wow, what a career, <laughs> Rob. <laughs> So now here's another very interesting thing. Mm -hmm. um, you were on Capitol Hill on January 6th. I was. Tell me about that experience. Uh, it was one of the most traumatizing experiences in my entire life. Um, I remember that day, it was almost like a blur, um, but I remember leading up to it, I felt the intensity and the tenseness on Capitol Hill um, amongst the staffers, amongst the visitors and the members that day leading up to it. Uh, and that day was quite scary for me. I remember sheltering in place with my staffers and having to call my father, and my father fervently praying with me on the phone, and I had no idea what was going on outside. And then my mother called, uh, and now one of my colleagues here at ICE called me just to make sure I was okay. And this was even before I was an employee here at ICE. Um, a person uh, reached out from the team here and just wanted to make sure I was okay, even though I was barricaded in the office with my staffers. Um, that person prayed with me, make sure I was okay. But again, it was one of the most traumatizing, scariest experiences I've ever had in my entire life. I'm glad that I lived through it, made it through. Um, I'm glad that democracy is still intact. Um, and I'm also glad that the events of that day are being investigated properly by the United States government. Yeah, well, we are glad you're okay as well. Absolutely. Um, okay, so now on a positive note, it's Black History Month. Yes. What does Black History Month mean to you? Black History Month, it's my favorite time of year. I'll be perfectly honest with you. Um, by the virtue of the fact that I am African American, but I believe that black history belongs to every American because black history is so inculcated and it's so rich and it makes American history what it is today. Um, I think for this entire month, you know, I try to f I find myself in positions where I'm thanking black people for their service and thanking them for what they've done to, for the country uh, and in the country, um, particularly black women. Um, you know, I know that I've talked to you several times about my mother and a lot of the black women that have mentored me throughout the years. Uh, so for me, this is just an opportunity, as I think it should be for every American, to really look back at the advances uh, and the accomplishments and the contributions of all African Americans in this country. Oh, wonderful. All right, so Rob, now last week we had FedEx here with yes. many um, HBCUs. Yes. Morehouse was one of them. Now you, uh, Morehouse is your alma mater. 
Yes, it is. So it is. It is. Tell it is. Me, what, it what is. was it like being at Morehouse? Oh man. Well, so a little bit about Morehouse. Founded in 1867 by Henry Lyman Morehouse. Uh, Morehouse is the nation's only African American institution, HBCU, for men. Uh, across the street is Spelman College, which is an African American institution for women. Um, Morehouse graduates about uh, 800 students every year, student body of about 3,000 students, and it's growing every single year. Um, traditional major, liberal arts college. Uh, for me, it was the best educational experience that I could have ever received. Um, not because of the in-classroom education, but the out-of-classroom instruction that I received from people that looked like me. Um, it was the first time I'd ever had an African-American male teach me in any subject matter area. With a PhD, I had no TAs at Morehouse. Everyone had a PhD that taught me. The class sizes were incredibly small. Um, Southwest Atlanta, so I was in a historically black neighborhood at my historically black college, and I love Morehouse so, so much. Anyone who knows me, it's almost like, you know, that friend that tags along with you. They're like, we know that Morehouse is with him. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> that sounds like a great experience. Absolutely, absolutely it was. <laughs> All right, now finally. Who's the one person who's inspired you? I would say my mother. And my, both of my parents are absolutely fantastic. I love both my parents. Uh, my mother was a single mother, and she raised me by herself um, in Columbus, Ohio. And uh, I didn't realize until I got older, you know, how many resources or lack thereof my mother had in order to raise me uh, and, and do such a fine job that she did. Um, thankfully, my mother's still living, 75 years old, going on 38. Uh, <laughs> Love it. <laughs> absolutely. Um, but, you know, I remember having conversations about the future as a child with my mother, and she would always tell me, but college first. You know, I would always say, you know, oh, I want a nice house and a nice car, and she would say, but college first. And my grandmother would reinforce that. My grandmother, who was from Georgia, she would always say, I want you to go to that school in Georgia that Dr. King went to on that red clay hill. And she was talking about Morehouse. Wow. And not only did I make that dream of hers come to fruition, you know, but also my mother, you know, keeping with that, that tradition, that pride of our family of doing the best that you can be. You know, although I'm one of the first college graduates in my family, you know, I, I can say that with pride and with excellence, I've done everything that my family wanted me to do. And I'm happy doing it. I'm proud doing it. Uh, I'm serving our country. I'm serving our, our business here at ICE and the New York Stock Exchange. And, and I'm just, I'm so blessed to be from a family like that. Even though we didn't have all the resources that many other American families may have had, you know, it's by the grace of God and my family's prayers that I'm sitting here today. <laughs> all right, Rob, it's been wonderful to get to know you. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you. I really appreciate Thanks that. Thanks for joining me on Floor Talk. Indeed. Thank you.